Welcome to Reykjavik, Iceland. I'm standing outside of Harper, the brand new conference center and music hall here in the capital city. But it's inside that something very important is taking place. The Icelandic Conference and the Trans-European Division have joined together to put on a Bible in 3D exhibition. Come and let's have a look what is inside. We start in the setting of a traditional Icelandic house and within the Icelandic culture Bible reading would have taken place each evening. This helped preserve both the Icelandic language and the Icelandic culture while also giving a deep sense of feeling of the childhood faith and that's still there to this day. And so the Bible has played a very important part in the history of Iceland. Vattin er minn hirðir, mig mun ekki bresta. Á grænum gröndum lætur hann ég hvílast, þar sem ég má næðis njóta. Vattin er minn hirðir, mig mun ekki bresta. Á grænum gröndum lætur hann ég hvílast. And so the Bible has been very important in Icelandic history. We now need to go and look into the exhibition and so we will follow a map that takes us all the way through the different stages of the exhibition. Í upphafi var orðið og orðið var hjá Guði og orðið var Guð. As we come inside the exhibition, we come to the first stage, which is the stage of creation. Each day has been individually depicted, but modern technology has also been used, and we come to something very interesting here. We have with us Janos Kovac Biro, who is the evangelism director of the Trans European Division. Janos, I know this has been a, a, co a cooperation between the Icelandic Conference and the Trans European Division, but you are one of those who've been in behind the vision of this. So tell us something about the vision of this project. So this is a long process. We, we started praying for this and we started by studying the Bible and studying the Icelandic culture. And very soon we found out that in, a, in an Icelandic culture they had Bible readings during the evenings and that is how the culture and also the language survived. So when you go through the exhibition you can touch things, you can stop, you can meditate, you can experience actually how the Bible story is relevant to your culture. That's why we introduced Icelandic elements into the exhibition that people would, would feel and would see the relevance of the Bible to themselves. Here in the exhibition we come to two ways. We can go this way or this way. It represents two choices. Let's have a look at this way and we see the, the picture of the apple. Come and follow me to see where we go. This way has begun to get very difficult as I find my way through and even have to be able to duck under obstacles. The Bible records that there is a way back. These pictures show there are still challenges to be faced in life. But the Bible here shows that there is a clear path. These Bibles have actually been loaned from the Bible Society in Iceland and there's been a good cooperation that has helped given great authenticity to the exhibition. I have with me Pastor Eric Goodmanson, the President of the Iceland Conference. Eric, this must have been a, a big project for the Iceland Conference to run. Actually, yeah, it's been a very, very big project and when I think about it, this may probably be the biggest that we have ever engaged in. Eric, as I have gone through the exhibition myself, I've seen that there's a connection with the Bible Society here with some Bibles and I believe you've had other contact too. Yes, that's right. We, uh, we've been very fortunate to get a very good support from, from religious leaders. We, of course, invited them already around Christmas, sent them a Christmas card where we mentioned what was going to happen and we also introduced it to the Corporation Committee of all Christian churches and got very favorable and positive response. Did I hear it was mentioned on the radio on Bible Sunday uh, just recently? 
That's right. Uh, the leader of the Bible Society here, who that was the person I've actually that I dealt with to, in order to to get the Bibles here as a loan to the exhibition. These are not no, any regular Bibles. These are the original copies uh, of the first Bible, for instance, that was translated into Icelandic 1584. This is one of the originals, signed by the daughter of this the bishop that actually uh, dealt with the printing. Many people come here just to look at the Bibles, and then they see all the other things that we are presenting as in addition. I'm holding in my hands a very important Bible. It dates back to 1584. Only 500 were printed at that time, and it's been signed by the daughter of the bishop. This makes it so valuable. It's so valuable that it's normally held under lock and key in a bank vault. But the Bible Society have loaned it to this exhibition and people have come through just to see this and other Bibles. It is really authentic. We have with us Pastor Manfred Lemke. Manfred is on the pastoral staff here in Reykjavik for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Manfred, how important for, has it been for you as the local pastor to see this exhibition take place? You see, in Iceland, as maybe in many other countries, the Bible is not really something that is very popular these days. There are many debates about believing in the schools in Reykjavik, for instance. There is a, there's quite a, a legislation about, about uh, um, missionary, any type of mission work cannot be performed anymore. So to see this happening here in the most beautiful venue of the city, of the country, is something, it's incredible really. And you've made the connection from Icelandic culture, Icelandic yeah. language, and the Bible tradition of the childhood faith. Absolutely. Uh, that's very important really, because uh, I think, I really believe that a lot of, of these um, adversities we get against the Bible, about, against Christian values, are built on, on misunderstanding. So what we try to do here is really to tell people Iceland, Icelandic culture, um, even the language, everything is built on, based on, on the Bible really. Throughout the exhibition you will find these lights. They indicate thinking points or points of reflection. And as we come to this stage in the exhibition, we certainly do need to stop and think. We have a chart here indicating the Bible prophecies from the Old Testament as they move through, pointing towards the coming Messiah. The exhibition now moves on to the birth of Christ and has a great sensory feel both for children and for adults. But here we come to one of my favourite parts of the exhibition. This sign clearly indicates there were no vacancies, no room at the inn. And as we know, society today makes no room for a messiah either. I have with me now Maria, Eric's daughter, who is a graphic designer by profession. So how did you brand it then? Did you have a particular aim when you were doing it? We did. We, we tried to um, communicate to people's kind of childhood's faith. Mm -hmm. um, there's a word for this in Icelandic, barnatru. And most Icelanders will admit to having this barnatru. And have you had to make changes for children? Actually, we've, we just planned this to the best of our knowledge um, with this barnatru concept in mind. And what we got was something that was actually very child-friendly. And we weren't planning on getting hundreds of children here. That's just something that God sent to us. And what, do you have a favorite part of the exhibition, if you know yourself? I, I really like the neon sign, <laughs> I have to say, in Bethlehem, with the graffiti and the wires. I think that's, I think that's good. I also like the, the crib for baby Jesus. Um, above it are little cards that children made. So these are little like messages to, to the baby Jesus.
we come now to one of the most visually interesting parts of the exhibition. This stage is dealing with Jesus as our saviour, but it's depicted through the, the medium of uh, saving lives at sea. Iceland, of course, is a maritime nation, so it's readily understood. And we see here part of a boat which actually wrecked, but 38 lives were saved. And it shows in a very graphic way the idea that Jesus is our saviour who saves lives today. As we come around the corner, the exhibition leads us to the cross. The symbol of the cross is recognised the world over. But maybe what not is fully understood is the suffering of Jesus, why he died and to save us from our sins. And each person who comes through has the chance to stop and reflect on what it means to them. Manfred, I've seen you take a very practical part in the mm. exhibition and you've been leading through many groups, particularly mm. children. What's been their response? The response has been great. Of course, for me, it was surprising to see that some classes came and there was none who knew one single story about Jesus. And there were other classes where you had questions raised from such a depth that it would have been a, a class in theology. So. Sometimes I've really felt, wow, I have to start absolutely from scratch. And in other times I felt very much the lack of time because there was an individual who needed now, you needed to go in depth with a certain question which was the core of our belief. Here we have a laboratory of faith. People coming through are being asked to pray for something for 10, 20 or 40 days, whether they're a believer or not. And then at the end of their test of faith to record what has happened, the results. And we believe that they will find that there will be many answers to write down. There are two strands to this project. There is the exhibition, but we're, we're seated here in an auditorium and I know you've been holding meetings. So can you tell us something about the meetings too? Yes, actually these meetings are in order to retell the story which is exhibited in the exhibition and also to address some relevant issues of the Icelandic society. So we invited experts and very well-known speakers to address those issues and then we also asked Gardar Cortes, who is one of the well, most well-known musicians in Iceland, to organize the music for us. And every single evening we have one of the most well-known choirs of Iceland performing and basically giving a mini concert for us. Then we go into the Bible story and we retell the story in an evangelistic way. I have with me Adrian Lopez, who's been one of the key workers behind the Bible in 3D project. Adrian, welcome. Thank you. Now, I'm very interested we're here in Harper, which is a magnificent building. Was it yes. a conscious decision to go big rather than remaining small in a local facility? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, I just talked to Eric and I told him, Eric, we need to aim for the, for the best. You know, this is the most important venue in, in the country. And uh, it's actually brand new. Everybody wants to come and see it and, and, and visit it. And so we are offering people a beautiful event completely for free in the most beautiful and important venue of the country. So yes, definitely it, it has been a, a great advantage. How important has it been to be somewhere that is nationally recognized? 
I believe that this is extremely important and actually Ellen White is stressing this issue in the book Evangelism saying that in case we would like to address relevant issues to a city, we should rent the best places of that city. Harpa, this building, is the most well-known building in the whole country and people would like to come even for curiosity to see the building from inside and here is the exhibition and here we have our meetings. So I think this, this was a, a very good hit in, in this program. Thank you, Janos. And I, I, you have seen God's leading, haven't yes, you, yes. in what you're doing here? We have experienced a miracle at least every single day. Thank you very much, Janos. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. As we move towards the end of the exhibition, we see the Bible depicted as God's living word. And on these screens behind me, we have the Bible translations throughout the ages. And it leads through, and I can see the King James Version in 1611. As we walk over now to this side, we come to the children's corner. And children have been so involved in this exhibition. They have come through in large numbers, school group after school group, and they love the interaction. Finally, we now reach the end of the exhibition. We have creation to recreation, paradise lost to paradise regained. So it would be fair to say you're pleased with the end results of the, the project? Yes, of course we haven't finished yet, but uh, I think uh, we look at this as a sewing campaign. We, uh, we are not so much trying to probably call people into the church and into conversion or to baptism, but sewing to, to get, sort of start relationships and uh, this has been very well sort of noticed in society and we are certainly hoping that this is a start for something even bigger. I can sum up the program in one word, quality. Quality venue, high quality exhibition, presentations and program. Showcasing God's word. The combination has attracted young and old alike. It has been done well, it deserves to be done again. Paul Tompkins, Ted Media, Reykjavik, Iceland.